Welcome to another GearCaster video. Today we're having a look at how to change a flat bike tire. The first thing you want to do is you want to look for the brake, the front brake, and you want to lift the lever there to make sure there's enough room to get your tire out. Then you go down to the quick release. Again, there's another lever. You want to snap that open. It might be a little tough. But once you push that open with your other hand on the right side, you can loosen the, the other side of the quick release. You don't need to do too much, just enough to be able to get your wheel out basically of the front drop out of the fork. So once you get your wheel free, just pull it straight out. Then make sure your pedals are out of the way and then you can rest the front of your bike. Basically the dropouts are steel so they're not going to be harmed to rest that on the road. Make sure your bike's kind of somewhere safe where it's not going to get knocked over by people riding by or cars or anything else. Then the next thing you want to do is go to the valve and take off. There's a little plastic cap. You want to take that off. And there's probably also a washer there too holding the valve in place to the rim. So you want to take that washer off as well. And make sure you put those two pieces in a safe place so you're not going to lose them because you're going to need them again at the end. Now I'm letting air out of the tire here. Um, I'm opening up the valve and letting all the air out because I don't have a flat. Um, so I'm just trying to simulate having a flat here. So the absolute key next thing to do is with your hands go around the entire tire and massage. So massage the tire and what you're trying to do is loosen the bead. It's called the bead which is holding that tire into the rim of your wheel. So once you've gone around the whole entire tire, um, you're going to get your tire lever. So you're basically only going to need one. So the tire lever has a little scoop and what you want to do is scoop under the bead, that lip on that tire. And once you have it underneath the lip, you don't want to get the tube, just the lip of the tire. Put it between your legs and push forward. And you're releasing the bead all the way around and once you get it going it becomes pretty easy you can even kind of lift it up and do the rest it should be simple to get everything else off so now if you only have a pinch flat like if you hit a pothole or something and you know that there's nothing stuck in your tire you only have to take this one side out so you can go ahead and go and remove the tube the tube that's probably busted on the inside Oh, and what I found is helpful is if you go and remove the rest of the tube first before trying to get the valve out of the hole in the rim. Uh, what you would do if you had something stuck in your tire, let's say a glass or a nail, you would have to take the other side the bead off as well too so that the whole tire comes off so that you can run your fingers across that tire and make sure that there's nothing sharp in there. So now that I have the tube out, I need to get the valve out. So I'm trying to pull that out. And there you go. So what you would do is you would take the other tube from that you've got in your saddlebag. So you've got a brand new tube, tube back there. And what you want to do first is um, put a little bit of air in it this um, just to give it some form. So I'm blowing in it here. If you've got a hand pump, you could use that as well too. Um, but it's just easy to do a couple of puffs straight in. And the first thing you want to do is put the valve back in. Um, I'm going through and inspecting the, the tire here just to make sure, as I mentioned before, that there's no sharp objects in it so that before I waste a brand new tube that I know is going to get punctured if there's something sharp in it, I might as well check to make sure there isn't. So I'm placing the valve in. You can usually find the valve hole because there's writing on the side of the tire and that writing should be kind of positioned right above the valve, valve hole which makes it easier to get in. So what you want to do next is you want to take the tube and basically position it directly above the rim under the tire. You want to make sure that it's not sticking out anywhere because then you could end up with another pinch flat again. So you're going around the entire wheel and you're basically seating the tube directly above the rim and under the tire. This may take a little bit of patience, at least for me it does, but um, some people can do it in you know, maybe a couple of seconds. It takes me a bit longer.
So once you have the tube all the way in, what you want to go is run your fingers around the wheel, putting the bead back in. So you'll hear it snap. It's pretty easy to recognize that it's gone back in to the, to the rim, securely into the rim. So you'll get probably three quarters of the way around the wheel before it will get really difficult to get the last bead, part of the bead in. Um, and this is when you kind of want to turn the wheel away from you, um, kind of rest it on your stomach, turn the wheel away from you, and use your, use your thumbs. Your thumbs are pretty strong. So here you can see I'm pushing just the last part of the bead in, and it will snap easily into place. Now again, what you want to do is check. I'm going to check both sides to make sure that there's no tube sticking out, because if I start to, to pump up the wheel and I've got tube sticking out, I could risk you know, puncturing it again. So I'll go through both sides, checking for no sharp objects, no tube sticking out, um, just to make sure that the, the wheel looks like it's in good shape. Now, whether you have a seat pump in your you know, back jersey pocket or a CO2 cartridge in your saddlebag or um, a hand pump, it's, it's up to you. But what you want to do first is put that washer that you were holding onto, put the washer back with the valve. Make sure that your valve is open so you're not going to be able to pump air unless that valve is open. Um, and I'm going to be using a, so here I'm opening up the valve to make sure. I'm going to be using a hand, or a, I guess a regular bike pump just to get the air in there quickly. Um, if you do have a CO2 cartridge, just make sure that you're not handling the cartridge itself when you blow up your tire because it gets really cold and you could burn your hand pretty badly. Um, so make sure that most CO2 cartridges come with a little plastic case around them or um, you could be wearing gloves, but you might want to do that. So I put a couple of pumps into the tire first. And then I'm going to go around and look just to make sure that there's no tube sticking out. Um, again, I want to make sure that everything is seated correctly and I'm not going to risk having, a, having another flat as soon as I start to pump up the tire to, to the 100 PSI. So everything looks pretty good, so I'm going to pump it all the way up. So as I mentioned earlier in the post, it's 100 PSI generally. You could go 10 lower if it's a rainy day out or the road is really bad, or 10 higher if it's a super hot dry day and you know that the road's going to be hot. And when you're at the desired, I guess, fill, then you take off the pump and you want to put close the valve so righty tidy then put the plastic cap back on again if you've got it and the last thing you have to do is put the wheel back on the bike which is super easy so you're going to slot it between the fork You'll see the dropouts will rest right on that, that front hub. And it should drop, drop right in. And then you want to tighten the quick release. So it's kind of easy to, while you twist righty tighty with the right hand, kind of pull the lever down with your left to make sure it's like at the right, um, I guess, tightness that you want it. Also make sure that the lever's not going to snap on the frame anywhere, on the fork anywhere. So you want it kind of free and clear of the fork. And once you've got that tightened, then you put the brake lever back. So just put it down to where it's going to let the wheel spin freely. Make sure your wheel is spinning freely and there's nothing wrong. It's, you know, seated correctly in the fork and the hub and everything. And there you go, you've changed your first lap.